We start with this breaking news. There's been a shooting at a border crossing between the occupied West Bank and Jordan. Medical sources say at least three people were killed and that they were Israeli nationals. Israeli media say the attacker was also killed. This is a rapidly developing story. Let's get more from Al Jazeera's Nida Ibrahim. Uh, Nida, you're in Nablus right now in the occupied West Bank. So give us the basics as you know them. What happened, where did it happen, and who's involved? Well, well, the latest we got is from the Israeli army. They say that the perpetrator managed to get inside uh, the crossing from Jordan. He had a gun. He shot towards a number of people, according to the Israeli army, who were providing security and trying to make the crossing secure. Now, this is a highly militarized area, considered really filled. Every bit of it is censored, cameras, security, checkpoints, you name it. So it's considered a very big security breach, an incident that rarely happens inside there. And according to the Israeli forces, they say that they killed the perpetrator who managed to get in from the Jordanian side via the cargo terminal. He was in a truck. He went down and he shot those three men dead and left others injured. This crossing, called Al Karama Bridge for Palestinians, is their only entry and exit from uh, the occupied West Bank to Jordan. Remember, Palestinians do not have an airport, and the only way they can travel abroad is via this crossing in Jordan. After the attack happened, the Israeli forces have closed the bridge down, leading many people to mostly Palestinians to be stuck inside the bridge itself, uh, not being able to travel back and forth. We also know that the Israeli forces are now erecting checkpoints all around Jericho, which is very close, the closest town where Palestinians travel from there to the uh, uh, to Jordan. Again, three checkpoints against uh, that face Palestinians when they are trying to travel. The Palestinian one, and then the Israeli one, and then the Jordanian one. Highly militarized. This is still a developing story, as uh, you said there, Cyril. But again, we have to emphasize that this is a high security breach that uh, really will, will have a lot of ramifications. Nida, I don't know if you have an answer to this yet, but the three uh, Israelis who were killed, one assumes, given the area where this happened, that they would be security officers or soldiers. Do you know? Well, it's hard to tell if they are security officers or not. The wording in the Israeli army statement is that they are securing it. But we know for a fact that there are uh, customs officers over there. There are other workers inside the uh, crossing itself. So it's hard to determine what they were doing uh, there and who was targeted indeed. But it's safe to assume that maybe some of them were working in the security uh, to secure the border. Again, a developing story will get you uh, mm. the latest as soon as we get it. And just before I let you go, correct me if I'm wrong, but security incidents, shootings at this particular area, right, between the occupied, this border crossing between the occupied West Bank and Jordan are exceedingly rare, aren't they? Yes, like from the top of my head, I can tell you that the last time such an incident happened was years and years ago, and it was from a Palestinian Jordanian who uh, was uh, shooting towards people inside the crossing. He was shot dead at the time. The border was closed. Uh, similar incidents, but... Uh, Today, it happens at a time where Israel is already facing a lot of uh, attention here in the occupied West Bank and also in the northern front when we talk about uh, Lebanon, in addition to Gaza. Having this yet another shooting in a very critical security area is not going to be taken easily. We remember in the beginning of the war, the Israeli bridge itself, the crossing has been closed off for a couple of days, leading many Palestinians from the occupied West Bank stuck either here or in Jordan, not being able able to move. So we don't know how it's going to play out when it comes to the travelers there. Is, uh, it, are they going to increase the security beyond mm. uh, that it is right now? You know, when Palestinians go through these electronic gates, they checkpoint, they get checked, they, get, they have to take off their clothes, they have to go through these electronic gates. So we're talking about an already highly militarized and secured area, and this incident might get it even to get more and more. Okay, Nida, thank you very much for your reporting on this rapidly developing story. You will keep us apprised of developments as and when you get them. Thank you, Nida. Let's bring in Luciano Zaccara.
uh, Associate Professor of Gulf Politics at Qatar University. Luciano, you're, you're following this with us. There's, there's still quite a bit that we don't know. Um, so some definitive conclusions can't yet be drawn. But, but I want to pick your brains about just your initial reactions on what you're hearing. Well, of course, it's nothing, nothing positive, uh, let's say. Uh, it's showing that the fear we had about the, uh, the expansion of this conflict already happened several months ago already with uh, a lot of uh, situations that they were produced in the, in the West Bank with around 650 people already dead there. I mean, nobody's talking too much about the people that die in, in the West Bank, but this has been ongoing since the very beginning we as are. well. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I mean, a again, everybody's focusing on, on, yeah. the, on the people that are dying in Gaza, but not in West Bank. I mean, there is a war in, in West Bank as well. I mean, lately, in the last couple of weeks, what is happening in Jenin and Jericho and other places showing that the, the, uh, the Israelis are decided to break the will of the Palestinians. Uh, the problem is, once they decided to do that and they decided to extend the, the war to contain any kind of protest that can uh, erupt uh, in the West Bank, this is making other people to, to also to, to see that this very unjust situation and they want to do something else. Uh, we don't know yet if it is a Jordanian or mm. uh, a Palestinian, the, the man who did that. Uh, but most probably someone from Palestinian origin that wants to be solidarity with what is going on uh, on, the, on the other side. And, and it's also explaining that this is not going to be contained if the war in Gaza is not stopped. I mean, the, the war in Gaza should stop in order to reduce the tension. It's very difficult when we see the uh, mediators and mainly the US trying to prevent the expansion of the conflict or escalation of the conflict when you, do, you don't do anything to stop the main conflict that is what is going on in Gaza. Uh, Nida was telling us that the assailant came from the Jordanian side of the border, right? In a mm -hmm. truck, came out, opened fire. Um, Israel often says that it is at war on six or seven different fronts. When you think of Gaza, mm -hmm. occupied West Bank, Lebanon, the Houthis in Iraq, et cetera, et cetera. Jordan is not one you know, of the fronts exactly. where there is a, a major security concern for Israel. Exactly. There are two countries, Egypt and, and Jordan, they are safe borders because supposedly they have an agreement and their governments have made their best to prevent any kind of situation to be produced. The fact that they are starting to happen shows that this uh, feeling of uh, injustice that is uh, getting uh, and, uh, spread all over the region will affect the way in which also the Jordanian government uh, is going to deal with that. I mean, the Jordanian uh, government, I don't think they want to have a situation with Israel that put in danger mm. the, the peace uh, accord that they signed in 1994. So, uh, so I, I think it's something that we should emphasize. There is a very high level of security cooperation between yes. Jordan and Israel. This is something that usually works well. Exactly. If you remember when the, uh, Iran uh, retaliated uh, against, uh, uh, against uh, Israel and uh, they shot 300 uh, missiles, they, most of them they passed through the, the air of Jordan. And Jordan was also trying to contribute, n not to help Israel, but at least to, uh, to provide some kind of uh, support to, I mean, to avoid the missiles to cross their, their Yeah, they were not happy that their airspace exactly. was used in that. Yeah, so this is something that they don't want uh, yeah. to affect more. And, and therefore, they are, there is a lot of collaboration in terms of, in terms of security to avoid this kind of situation. Now, I mean, the reporter said, of course, the, situ the, the security will be much more increased than ever before because Israel doesn't want this to, to, to expand or anybody to enter from, from Jordan. But I believe that also the security will be extended inside Jordan to prevent anybody to cross the border or to do anything like that. So the, the checkpoints will be also inside Jordan, mm. I, I guess. Luciano Zakar, thank you very much for uh, your early, uh, early thoughts and early perspective on this story. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get latest news from Al Jazeera.